I was interested um, this morning, um, as we were recording this, that it was uh, St Alcuin's Day. And um, um, I was just conscious that Alcuin came from, was born in York, went to uh, Germany, Aachen, to teach the, em well, the Emperor's children, I think, Emperor Charlemagne, and then ended up as Abbot of Tours, which kind of, I thought, was a quite good introduction to thinking about Teze, which is such a, um, well, it's such an international kind of community. And um, I don't know, uh, Enid, when you went to, uh, uh, to visit Teze, but I, know that I was trying to think out cast my mind back because I was still at university and think it was 1975 <laughs> when I went there. When was oh it gosh, my again? I, I think I went round about 19, in the 1990s, maybe around about 94, 95. Right. Yeah. And so you went as a young man. I was a young man. <laughs> <laughs> I still had a beard. <laughs> and I went as a quite mature yeah, lady. <laughs> And I, and I guess it must have been very different experiences. So would you talk about when you went first yeah, and then sure. I, I'll, I'll tell you about my experiences. Yes. Okay, so um, I was um, at Bristol University where I was studying theology, philosophy, and uh, I was a member of the Anglican Society and, um, and we met at St Paul's Church in Lifton and uh, chapter in there thought it'd be really nice during the summer holidays um, to have a trip to Disney. And I think we all, it was, I think we were about 15 of us because we all went in a minibus, so we were actually about 15. And uh, we, we all, we're not all theology students, there were people doing other, other subjects as well. And we had a, a terrific um, journey down the Loire Valley um, in, in Tese. Um, and, uh, and it was, well, that, the journey itself was, was, really, was really good. Um, and uh, and it was quite it was amazing to get to uh, to, to Tete, which is all the way down south uh, east of France on the Swiss border, um, and to find this community um, there with all these young people, who were young people from well all across Europe. It wasn't Eastern Europe because it was before the before the Berlin Wall, so there were nearly all Western Europe Europeans some from uh, African countries and some from Latin American countries. Uh, so we were, so we were pretty mixed. Mm, mm, yeah, and, and when I went in, in the 1990s, it was out of season, so to speak. There were no young people there at all. Uh, and I went with, um, uh, a group that was organized by Salisbury Diocese. So I didn't really know anybody. And I think there were about 30 of us on mm. the bus. Was it nearly 24 hours <laughs> journey? <Okay. laughs> yes. And, uh, uh, and arrived there and uh, it was almost deserted. Wow. There were just maybe a couple of hundred people there. Right. All mature people, because, of course, we were not allowed to go during the main holiday yes. times, yes. because that's yes. when the young people went there. And I particularly remember the um, the evening prayers, um, mm. the, the vespers, when we had the lights, the candles. Yes. Did, did yes. you did you go? Yeah. Yes. Yes. That was fantastic. Yeah. yeah. We had to learn the chants in harmony. Yes. And and not only in English, but in other languages. Yes. yes, yes. And I remember I, I have a had a, a Taze chant book. And you know, there it was. There was German and French and Italian and Spanish and uh Polish, um all sorts of languages, about seven languages. Um yes, so, so when yeah. you went there, because all of the Eastern European um yeah. Christian community was coming across yes, it after yes. the Berlin Wall, which That's would have right. been a bit different. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And then, of course, you had Latin, which, of course, uh, everyone, yes. anyone's language of, you know, of, of kind of use, uh, but it was a language of the church which everyone could, could use. That's uh, right, because I think it was still at the stage where 
Latin was the main language for the Catholic Church services. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so everything was there. Uh, but I do remember every morning we had our, um, we had to practice our chants yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, and yeah. do that. Yes. Uh, yeah. what, was the, what was the feeling? What was the feeling that you had when you were there? Very quiet, very peaceful. It was, it was far from quiet. It was quite, quite noisy. Yes. Quite exuberant. And yeah. apart, apart from in the church service, when it was very yes. peaceful, very meditative yes. um, and prayerful and simple. Yeah. But I would expect with you that when you went to the church services, the, 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 the church, uh, which is quite large, and it's only one story, but it's a very large space. I should think with you, it was pretty full. It was full. And I have, of course, I have these sort of, they can open out the back of the church so they can extend it right wow. out the back side yes. uh, for as many thousands as they can accommodate. Yeah. Um, and um, and I just I just remember the lighting of the candles, and as we sang the chants and the candles were lit, and just there was a glow mm. for the church. Yes, and it was fantastic. Yeah. yeah, well, we had the glow, we had the candles for at the evening services, but we were very much spaced out. There was a lot of space around us, so for. For me, anyway, to go to that service, it was a very quiet service. Yes, we had the chanting, and then we had the silence. But there must have been, talking about two meters locked uh, space at the moment, there must have been three or four meters of space around me uh, mm -hmm. once I settled down on my cushion on the floor. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and. It was just the quietness and the calmness and the silence that struck me yeah. uh, in the services, yeah, it, especially, even, as you say, the evening service. It, 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 even when there were so many people there and young people, mm. when we had services, um, the worship time, there was a mm. lot of silence and you wouldn't think there were yeah. how many thousand in the, in the church because mm. it was so silent. Mm. Uh, and, and the thing I, I appreciated was, was the sort of simplicity of the mm. of Tezzi. Yes. Uh, and it's very much, you know, prayer of the heart. Yes. Um, whatever, I mean, it celebrated all the diversity. The diversity was fantastic. It's got this sense of, mm. of people with different cultures, different languages. Mm. And yet there was this simplicity of the heart where everyone can connect. Yes. And at the heart, of course, is, is the love of God. So I think it was the beginning of me exploring contemplative prayer. And as you say, prayer of the heart. Yeah. And, um, and not using words. Mm. Just being in the presence of God and letting God speak to me rather than me speak to God. Yeah. And I, I think it really brought home to me that there wasn't just one way to pray. There were other strands to prayer and other ways of praying. Mm -hmm. I think during this time of coronavirus, I think there is, on one level, there's a lot of, um, we're using all this media, which is, which is great in many ways. But I think mm. we're also looking for that simplicity. And I think a number of people have said to me, and they've gone out and they've listened to the burns and they've, they've mm. become aware of the, of the world around and there's a sense of wanting that simplicity and I think as they chimes in quite well with that um, mm. that atmosphere um, yes. and the other thing was I also found it very joyful because that was monastic community um, um, and obviously the thing is with a lot of young people you couldn't really keep this too long um, <laughs> so there was a very joyous atmosphere around I think you know we, we also we need that we're in a, in a very, we need that sense of joy which is difficult sometimes amidst all the suffering that's going on at the moment, mm. to find, find some joy and some upliftment for our, for our hearts. Yes. A reading from Luke's Gospel, chapter 11. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. If you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now have a time of reflection and silence, and I'll offer you something to think about in this time of quiet. First of all, you might like to make sure that you're sitting comfortably. Spend some time thinking about each part of your body, from your head to your toes. Are you feeling relaxed? Is your breathing slow and rhythmic? You may wish to close your eyes, but if not, there's a candle on the screen for you to focus on. In the reading from Luke, we learnt how Jesus taught us to pray. Prayer is such an important part of our faith, and yet it can be the most difficult at times. In this passage, we see even the disciples were unsure of exactly how to pray. Sometimes we're afraid of seeming selfish by asking for too much. Other times we may worry because we're not praying enough. Sometimes we're afraid to pray out loud in front of others. But when we pray alone, we end up falling asleep or realise our mind is wandering. In this time of crisis, I wonder if you're finding prayer difficult. Why is prayer so difficult? Others may be feeling that they can't pray at all. What then would help us to pray? Jesus' instructions on prayer were simple. Ask and you will receive. Praise God. Pray for daily needs. Pray for others. Pray for forgiveness and the strength to forgive. So in this time of silence, offer your thoughts to God. You may like to think about the prayer that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer, and take just one line from it and repeat it a few times to yourself. Is God saying something to you through it? Is there one word that speaks to you? At the end of the silence, we will draw our thoughts back together with a prayer.
So let us pray. Father, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation. Draw us to a deeper relationship with you through prayer. Teach us to pray. Amen.